Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into the wild world of police technology. We're talking about the gadgets, the gizmos, the tech that's changing the game for law enforcement. Now some of this stuff is straight out of a sci-fi movie and it comes with questions about privacy, ethics, and whether we're one firmware update away from a Robocop situation. We're going to break down the top 10 police technologies, how they're used, and what it all means for you. So buckle up because things are about to get very real, very techy, and hopefully, just a little bit funny. Let's get into it. These are the top 10 police technologies you should know about. 10. Let's kick things off with body-worn cameras or BWCs because nothing says we're rolling, like a tiny camera stuck to a police officer's chest. The idea is simple. Record interactions for transparency and accountability. Supporters say BWCs de-escalate situations and provide crucial evidence. Critics argue footage can be edited, cameras turned off, and privacy concerns arise. Plus, the cost is enormous. BWCs are a step towards transparency, but raise new challenges. So next time you see an officer with a camera, remember it's a symbol of a larger debate. 9. Next up is Automated License Plate Recognition, or ALPR. ALPR systems scan license plates and compare them against databases of stolen vehicles and wanted individuals. If there's a match, the system alerts the police. But this technology raises serious concerns. Databases can be inaccurate, flagging cars incorrectly. There's also potential for abuse and mass surveillance. So while ALPR can catch criminals, it also threatens privacy. 8. Let's take to the skies. Drones, also known as unmanned aerial vehicles or UAVs, are popular tools for law enforcement. They're cheap, easy to operate, and provide a bird's eye view. Need to monitor a large crowd? Send in the drones, searching for a missing person? Drones to the rescue. Want to inspect a suspicious package? Drone drop. But drones raise privacy concerns. They can peer into backyards and record private moments. Law enforcement argues they're for surveillance, but concerns about mission creep persist. There's also the issue of weaponization. While most are unarmed, future drones could carry weapons. Drones offer a glimpse into the future of law enforcement but raise questions about privacy and oversight. 7. Now let's talk about ShotSpotter, a system that's basically like having a giant pair of ears listening for gunshots across an entire city. Here's how it works. A network of microphones is strategically placed throughout a city, and these microphones are constantly listening for the sound of gunshots. When a gunshot is detected, the system uses triangulation to pinpoint the location of the shot, often within a matter of a few miles, and then relays that information to law enforcement in real time. Proponents of ShotSpotter argue that it helps police respond to shootings more quickly, potentially saving lives and reducing gun violence. They also claim that it helps to solve crimes by providing valuable evidence even in cases where no one calls 911. Sounds great, right? Well, not so fast. Critics of ShotSpotter argue that the system is prone to false positives. Fireworks, car backfires, even loud construction noises can sometimes be misidentified as gunshots. And these false positives can lead to unnecessary police deployments, often in already over-policed communities, which can escalate tensions and lead to dangerous confrontations. So, while ShotSpotter might seem like a promising tool in the fight against gun violence, it's important to remember that it's not a magic bullet. 6. Predictive policing is the next technology on our list. This software uses data analysis and algorithms to predict crime hotspots. Think of it like a weather forecast but for crime. The goal is to allocate resources effectively and prevent crimes. But critics argue it's biased, perpetuating inequalities. Historical data can skew results leading to over-policing. Remember, it's only as good as the data and users. 5. Moving on to something that's not just about crime prevention but also officer training virtual reality, or VR. VR has actually become a pretty sophisticated tool for training officers in a safe, controlled environment. We're talking about immersive simulations that can recreate a wide range of scenarios, from routine traffic stops to active shooter situations, all without putting officers or civilians at risk. In these virtual worlds, officers can practice de-escalation techniques, learn how to use force appropriately, and make split-second decisions under pressure. The idea is that by training in these realistic simulations, officers will be better prepared to handle real-world situations, reducing the likelihood of mistakes, misconduct, and unnecessary use of force. 
Critics of VR training argue that while it might be good for teaching technical skills, it can't fully replicate the complexities and unpredictability of real-life encounters. They argue that by relying too heavily on VR, officers might develop a false sense of confidence or even worse, become desensitized to violence. There's also the concern that VR training could be used to justify the use of force, with officers claiming they were simply following their training even if their actions were excessive or unjustified. So, while VR training has the potential to improve police training and decision-making, it's important to remember that it's just one tool in the toolbox. 4. Now let's talk about facial recognition technology, a tool that's as controversial as it is ubiquitous. Facial recognition is everywhere these days from unlocking our phones to tagging friends on social media. And it's no surprise that law enforcement agencies are eager to get in on the action. This technology allows them to scan faces in real time, comparing them against massive databases of mugshots, driver's licenses, and even social media profiles. The potential applications are vast identifying suspects in surveillance footage, tracking down missing persons, even preventing crime by identifying potential threats in crowds. But, and you knew there was a but coming, right? Facial recognition technology is a privacy nightmare waiting to happen. We're talking about a technology that can be used to track our movements, monitor our activities, and even predict our behavior, all without our knowledge or consent. And let's not forget about the accuracy issues. Facial recognition systems are notoriously bad at identifying people of color, women, and young people, leading to misidentification, false arrests, and a whole lot of awkward encounters with the police. So while facial recognition technology might seem like a powerful tool for law enforcement, it's important to remember that it comes at a steep price, our privacy. 3. Let's switch gears and talk about robotics and AI-assisted crime investigations. Robots collect evidence, drones map crime scenes, and AI analyzes data to identify suspects. These technologies can solve crimes efficiently and reduce human error. Robots inspect suspicious packages and engage in hostage negotiations. AI analyzes crime data to identify patterns and trends, but there are ethical and practical concerns. One major concern is bias in the data. Biased data leads to biased results. This can exacerbate racial and socioeconomic disparities. There's also a lack of transparency and accountability. Who's responsible for mistakes? The officer operating the robot, the programmer who wrote the code, or the company that developed the technology? 2. Tasers have long been touted as a less lethal alternative to firearms, a way for police officers to subdue suspects without resorting to deadly force. And while tasers can certainly be less lethal than guns, they're not without their risks. Tasers work by delivering a powerful electric shock that disrupts the body's nervous system, causing temporary paralysis. Now, newer taser models are being equipped with advanced targeting systems, making them even more accurate and, in theory, safer. These systems use lasers, rangefinders, and even augmented reality to help officers aim the taser more precisely, reducing the risk of missed shots or accidental deployments. Sounds like an improvement, right? Well, critics argue that even with these advancements, tasers are still open to misuse and abuse. They argue that the pain inflicted by tasers can be excessive and that their use can be escalated unnecessarily. There's also the concern that tasers might be used on vulnerable individuals, such as pregnant women, the elderly, or people with disabilities, who might be more susceptible to the effects of the electric shock. So, while tasers with advanced targeting might seem like a step in the right direction, it's important to remember that they're not a magic solution. 1. Finally, we have crime mapping software, a tool that allows law enforcement to visualize crime data in new and innovative ways. We're talking about interactive maps, heat maps, and other data visualizations that show where crimes are happening, when they're happening, and even who's committing them. This information can then be used to identify crime hotspots, track crime trends, and allocate police resources more effectively. Crime mapping software can be a valuable tool for law enforcement, helping them to understand crime patterns, deploy officers more strategically, and even work with communities to prevent crime. But, and you know there's always a but, right? Crime mapping software is only as good as the data that's fed into it, and if that data is incomplete, inaccurate, or biased, the maps will reflect those flaws. 
For example, if police are more likely to stop and frisk people in certain neighborhoods, those neighborhoods might appear to have higher crime rates, even if the actual crime rates are similar to other areas. This can lead to a self-fulfilling prophecy, with police focusing their resources on areas that are perceived to be high crime, further reinforcing those perceptions. So, there you have it. 10 technologies that are changing the way police forces operate, from the streets we walk on to the data that defines us. Some of these tools like body-worn cameras and crime mapping software offer a glimmer of hope, a chance to increase transparency and accountability in law enforcement. But others, like facial recognition technology and predictive policing, raise serious concerns about privacy, bias, and the potential for abuse. And that's the thing about technology, isn't it? It's a double-edged sword. We need to have open and honest conversations about the role of technology in law enforcement, weighing the potential benefits against the very real risks.